Now let's talk about sections and their properties. In each context, you can actually have one or more sections, and each of these sections will have their own properties. Let's go take a look at what they are. Now note that all four options in the contextual menu are the same except for the includes, and we'll take a look at that in a moment. So let's go in properties. So there are three tabs inside of the print section properties. In the first tab, you have pretty much the same options that you define when you create a print template or print context. The only thing that is different here is the show PDF data mapper input as background image. This option is checked automatically when you have a PDF data mapping. Basically, it shows each page of your PDF as a source record as a background inside of your section. It will create the number of pages inside of each document that you have inside of your source record. Now, the page size that you see here depends on the media type that you have. What I mean here is that when you create a print context or a print template, the page size that you choose will automatically create the media of the same size and will set the size of the print section properties with the same values. If you change the page size here and you try to click OK, what happens is that it will actually give you the option of creating a new media because the media has to be the same as your page size. So you can have multiple medias for multiple page sizes and set them directly in the properties of the print section. I'll just cancel that out and go to the next tab. Now the finishing tab is actually found in two locations, in the section properties and in the print context properties. The difference between these two is that because you can have multiple section, you can define something like stapling on one section and not have stapling on the second one, which is basically called subset finishing. However, if you set something on the print context finishing, that will affect your whole document. So all of the record or the document generated by one record is affected by the print context finishing, while as each section has their own finishing that are possible. And the last tab in the print section properties is the sheet configuration. Don't worry, it's much simpler than it looks at first glance. Now, this basically defines what media and what master page you want to use for different positions inside of your output. A position basically is depending on how many pages your document will create. The example I have here in the background only has one page. I'll just move the dialog just a little bit. And you can see that the small toolbar at the top indicates that the sheet is single front and it uses the master page master one and the media one media. This corresponds to the last section here, which is single sheet. So single front, single sheet, it's the equivalent. So what this means is that you can define what happens on multiple page documents and single page documents from here. So let's say I have the possibility of having a different footer in the last page of multiple page documents. Here what I do is that on the last sheet, I'll select a different master. But on the first and middle sheet, so anything that's not the last page, I'll keep the first master, which has a header. Nothing changes in my single page, but if I switch to another record, which generates two pages, then you can see on the toolbar at the top, it's the first front. So the first page in the front of the sheet, and it still uses master one. But if I go to the second page, then we see that it uses master two because it's the last page and I set the last page to use master two, which has a footer. Now, one last thing, um, my two masters, master one and master two, one has a header, the other has a footer. Normally what you would do if you have this sort of configuration is that you would have a single master page, so a third master page that has both the header and the footer inside of a single master. And let's take a look at the last thing in the section properties, which is the includes. The two different sections here will basically define what style sheets and JavaScript code 
will be included when you generate print output. So what we see by default in the style sheets section is that the main default.css, which we include automatically in all templates, and then the global style sheets and the specific print context style sheet are all added. Now the order here is important, meaning that as I explained in the styles and style sheets animation, any style that's in say the print context style sheet will override or overwrite the ones in the style sheets above, only if it refers to the same element or the same selector. As for the JavaScript section, that's kind of an advanced concept, so we'll leave that for the advanced section of this course.